and welcome ladies and gentlemen back to the channel and today I'm gonna be trying to recreate one of the simplest yet most important mechanisms for ground transportation today it is a key component in the engines of our cars that allow internal combustion to happen and that is none other than the cam and follower now if you're like me a couple days ago you'll probably be like I know those words I mean I'm talking into a cam right now to my followers but much to my surprise when you put these two words in this particular order they actually means something very different in the engineering world so let's find out what it really means so I found this video on ADTW Learn. This is probably one of the most succinct and simplest videos to follow. Uh, I'm just gonna skip through to the key parts. So basically what a cam and follower does is it converts rotary motion into linear motion. And you can see the example of that right here. This is probably one of the more basic examples of what a cam and follower could look like. There's a bunch of different ways you could design the cam. This is the cam, this is the follower. There's a bunch of different designs for those things. They can serve all kinds of purposes and all kinds of cycle patterns. Like this is just a really simple oscillating pattern. Goes up, comes down, goes up, comes down. But if you change the shape of this thing, you can make it do more complex oscillations throughout the cycle. So this is just one type of cam. There's actually a bunch of different types of cams. Like look at this thing, a barrel or drum cam like this. This is definitely not something that'll be workable in the in scrap mechanic here, but uh, we're gonna we're gonna focus on the more basic one. This one, I was I was happy to see. Apparently there's a wedge cam. But this one kind of confuses me because if the purpose of a cam and follower is to convert rotary motion to linear motion, why is this converting linear motion to more linear motion? This is not rotary motion here. This wedge, that is not rotary. If you already have linear motion, just, just use it. But either way, much appreciation for including wedges in your cam and followers, okay? Thank you, engineers. Uh, you also got these really interesting things here. There's a spherical version of that as well. So yeah, if you want to learn even more context about the cam and followers outside of what is necessary for this video, uh, I'll leave a link to this video down in the description. But if you're wondering how this applies to engines in particular, here is an example of an internal combustion engine. And for this, although these pistons right here are also converted into linear motion from rotary motion, this actually isn't the cam and follower mechanism we're focusing on. This part up here is actually what we're focusing focusing on you can see these valves here are actually opened and closed with a cam and follower mechanism that's using the same shape as what we saw at the beginning of the previous video so this is the style of cam and follower here that I'm going to be trying to recreate and just in case you were wondering what applications cam and followers might have outside of an internal combustion engine uh I found this list right here apparently you got internal combustion engines fuel pumps in a diesel engine, automatic lathes, indexer, weaving, paper cutting, copying machines, wall clocks, toys, a tumbler lock. I'll leave a link to this page as well if you want to actually explore more about how they're used in these things. But let's jump over to Scrap Mechanic and see if I can actually build the basic mechanism. All right, so I thought of a couple of ways I want to do this, but my initial inclination was to put a wheel down and then try to build a protrusion off of the wheel to create that irregular shape that's going to give the oscillation. And there is a much easier way to do this than I, that I've thought of, but this way at least is going to be the easiest way to visually represent a similar mechanism to what we've seen. So I think just using a wedge, oh, this is not actually going to work nearly as well as I thought it was. <laughs> This might add for an interesting oscillation here, or maybe a big wheel would be better. You know what? Let's just put both next to each other and then we can compare and contrast big wheel or small wheel. Yeah, yeah, this is more like it right here. See, that curve leads much more smoothly into this. No, I can make this go a little bit better. Here, what about like that? That looks pretty good. I just wish I could make this tip rounded, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. So it's going to add a weird part to the oscillation. All right, so now all I got to do is attach an engine to this thing and this should give us our cam all we got to do is put a follower that's attached to it and it should be able to oscillate it up and down so i'm gonna do a follower that has a roller on it with this wheel here and i think i think it's already pretty much ready let's see what happens okay did that wheel did not roll that this doesn't make any sense that wheel is not rolling the direction it's supposed to be rolling but let's just ignore that it's working okay it's it's technically working how it's supposed to work 
All right, but there's this isn't actually translating the linear motion into anything that is going up and down other than the, the roller itself. So we need to have an attachment to this roller. All right, so I built pipe pieces going up around the suspension, and now that block is essentially what we're translating the linear motion into. So let's see how it looks. It should go up and down. Look at that, and it's actually, it's a pretty smooth, all things considered, it's pretty smooth. Can we go like as fast as we can without break? Oh, okay, that's not, <laughs> all right, we're not gonna be doing combustion engine speeds here. Scrap mechanics a little less consistent than that, but look at that, rotary motion, linear motion. All right, so now theoretically, I could introduce a modification to the oscillation pattern here. Here, let me put this down a little bit so I can reach up here. There we go. So now you can see that the oscillation is going to be two blocks, one block, two blocks, one block, two blocks. So I could add any kind of by changing the shape of the cam itself. OK, so I think this one is a pretty good visual replica of the initial cam and follower that I showed you guys. But uh, I have an easier way to accomplish this. It doesn't involve any extra blocks attached to the wheels. All right, so I'm going to keep this one here and I'm just going to modify this one over here because that can this can stay exactly the same. I'm just going to be changing the wheel itself. So all I'm going to do over here is just move the attachment point up one block, but the wheel is actually going to stay in the same place. So it's going to be rotating off center from its center axis. So if I just attach this and put it up to the same amount, you can see that it's accomplishing essentially the same thing and it's actually way smoother. So this oscillation pattern is actually a lot more different than I thought it was going to be because this has such a gradual like up and down. Like there's not a lot of downtime. This one has like, it's just down, then it's up and it's back down and it stays down for seconds before it goes back up at all. This one is like a very, it's like a sine wave basically. It's very gradual up, very gradual down. It doesn't stay at any one part of the cycle for very long at all, if at all. So let's see how much faster can we, this one I feel like will be much more stable to go faster. Look at that, this looks so smooth. This is so good, way better than this design right here. This is amazing. We could probably go way faster with it. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's interesting. There's some speed, oh no, <laughs> look at all the smoke. All right, max speed. This is max speed. It's not nearly as bad as max speed over here. Look at max speed over here. That's just concerning, right? I don't, I don't like that at all. This one, this is max speed. It just looks like it's a little too fast. This one looks like it's about to uh, cause a black hole. But man, this right here looks so good. And you know the interesting thing about this, actually, if I attach a driver's seat, there's an interesting potential use for this in Scrap Mechanic in particular. Because you see, normally in Scrap Mechanic, when you have control over like a piston or something like that, you can only move in one block increments. But with this attached to the seat, I can actually fine tune this like up and down just by rotating this wheel with forward and back. I can fine tune this like just any fraction of a block up or down wherever I want it to be. And then what I could actually do here, check this out. What I essentially have on the far side of the wheel, farthest from the rotation point, I have a stopper right here that's going to intersect with this part of the follower. And then on also on the close side of the wheel, closest to the rotation, I have a stopper as well. So now when I hold W, it's going to rotate it and then it stops because of this stopper at its highest compression point right here. So then if I press S to go down, I'll rotate it and then it'll stop it at the lowest point of its compression. So now I pretty much have a WS control to extend and contract this piston essentially. But the difference between this and a regular piston is I can control it anywhere in between the maximum and minimum points without having to adhere to the single block extension limits. So I'm curious if I stack suspension and then I changed the rotation point to be further from the center of the wheel, I think I can get more range out of this. Let's copy this and try it. Okay, here we go. So now you can see I've got two suspension going into this thing and the wheel is now attached by its outer edge rather than by its kind of middle uh, circumference. This one, you can see its articulation goes up and down by, what is that, like two blocks? Goes up and down by about two blocks. But this one, you can see, goes up and down. Is that five blocks? I think that's a five block difference in articulation. And of course, just like the other one, if I wanted to, I could 
start and stop at any point through that cycle. The, the, ignore the suspension freaking out. It's not actually affecting anything. But yeah, it gives us a lot of freedom of movement. So I kind of want to create almost like a wave table of sorts. Because if I change the starting position of each consecutive cam, they're going to uh, oscillate the followers at different parts of their cycles, creating like a cool wave effect. Oh man, this is actually pretty good, even at a faster rotation. I'm surprised at how stable this version is. This is really nice. What about even faster? Okay, nope, all right, that's where it gets a little bit too much. Never mind. All right, so I'm gonna try to build this wave thing. I don't know how many this is gonna be able to handle before it gets uh, laggy because suspension is pretty laggy, but this is gonna require a whole redesign of the system to accommodate the build grid. All right, so I built a new foundational unit for a cam and follower, and it's actually kind of i'm trying to make this modular so i can just keep attaching more and more but it's not that simple i think the starting point has to be a different construction than the consecutive points so this one's all set and i think for this to work i'm gonna have to have a separate follower and this is gonna be the attachment point to the previous follower and I think the cams are going to be easy enough just to build on their own. They're like, they're like one block, so it's not a huge deal. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to start with four followers, and I should be able to weld this to right there. And then I could just keep welding one follower onto the previous follower. I think this is as modular as I can figure out how to make it. So then now for the cams, I just need a separate bearing for each wheel. And this is not going to be a, a powered bearing by an electric engine. This is going to be to set them to their own particular angle. All right, so each of those cams are lined up with their follower. Okay, so now check it out. The power is gonna come from this bearing and it should rotate all of these cams. And then if each of these cams is offset 90 degrees from the previous cam, look at that, we should get the full cycle and that should make a wave when we power it. So let's see when we ha what happens when we hook up an electric engine to this thing. This is not welded to the ground, by the way, but here we go. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly what I was hoping for. Let's do it a little bit faster so we can actually follow it. I think that's what I'm looking for, right? So this isn't really lagging at all. So I wanna see if I can uh, extrapolate this out to a full eight followers. And then each one of these will then be 45 degree offset so we can get one smoother wave. Okay, I think it is ready. Let's power it up. Ooh, is that satisfying or what? The answer is yes, that is satisfying. That's I can't believe how smooth and non-laggy this is. I haven't even welded this thing or anything. So I could even, I have it actually attached over here as well. So I could power that bearing too. They're in the same direction. That'll make it much stronger. There we go. All right, this is cool. I didn't even really have to do anything fancy with this. I just had to make sure that all the wheels start on the bottom part of the cycle so that the uh, suspension could be fully extended while it's on the lift. And then once it gets off the lift, the controller just puts them all into their designated part of the cycle. And you can see each individual part of the cycle before I start it. All right, so I wanted to do a little experiment here. I built some pieces. These are supposed to be vertebrae, and this is gonna be a skull of like a dragon. It's like, it's really simple. It's not super detailed or anything. Basically, the idea is to, I'm gonna put the head of the dragon right there, and then I should be able to weld each vertebrae, vertebra, vertebros, right on each consecutive follower, and I don't have a tail. That's fine. And you know what? Let's just add a tail onto this one. Keeping it real simple here. There we go. All right, so now when we turn it on, I think we should have kind of like a dragon waving itself through the air. It doesn't look that great, but <laughs> it still kind of looks cool, right? <laughs> here, let's go ahead and increase the speed a little bit. I even gave it kind of like a mouth that opens and closes. It doesn't look like a very intimidating dragon. But I think you guys get the point. It was a fun experiment to try out. So this is my attempt at learning, understanding, and applying this engineering concept that I was completely unaware of just a couple days ago. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If there's anything else you'd like to see me try similar to this in any of the games that I play, let me know down in the comments below. Because it's hard to know what would be cool to experiment with when I might not even know it exists yet. So the comments help me out with that a lot. If you guys enjoyed this, you'll probably enjoy some of the other recreating real life machines in Scrap Mechanic. You can check that out on the end screen right here. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.